Hey guys, bonus episode today. In this discussion with Precision Sales, we share why we added the working jib to our inventory. Okay, I'm, I might as well start. Uh, I'm Ron McInnes, uh, Director of Sales and Marketing for Precision Sales, helping people choose the right cloth, the right sales sizes, all that kind of stuff at the front of the house. And I'm Jeremy Rayom, so I'm the uh, Director of Marketing and Logistics, so I help out with the marketing, getting all that going and dialed in, and then um, all of the systems that we have internally for measurements and making sure that all gets done. Let's just start with uh, what is it? What's the purpose it serves and what's a working GDIP? Well, I, I mean, jibs and Genoa's. This is a, a relatively large debate in the in the sailing world. Is you know, welcome to sailing. There's 17 names for the same types of things. Um, so, the difference between jibs and Genoa's is just size. Really, they're they're all head sails. Um, our company distinguishes at about uh, 115, 120 percent. It changes from a jib to a Genoa, right? Uh, in your case, you're you purchase the, the 135 with us. And as you're finding out in, as you get up into that 18 to 22 knot range, starts to overpower the boat, a little less comfortable for all those involved. Yeah. Right. So we then went and you've got a, a working jib from us. Right. Um, so, our definition of working jib is something that is smaller than 100% jib. So the, um, and, and if you're not familiar with, with those kind of percentages, you know, uh, the luff perpendicular percentage, uh, basically in a nutshell, it, it the, the clue will stop somewhere before the mast, right? And so the benefit for a lot of people on a working jib is that you can, uh, some boats have here, tracks problem. that will run a, a working jib. Your boat, I don't believe, does, but you can set the uh, the sheets for that sail, set the lengths on port and starboard, pretty much set it, forget it. So you have one less thing to kind of deal with. You can tack till your heart's content. That sail's going to be fine. There's no winching. There's no worry about you know no setting tension or anything like that. So it it its purpose is to reduce sail area and to make it a little bit easier for everyone to uh, to manipulate typically in higher winds, heavier seas, that sort of thing. Now, hold on. That's, that's, that's mind blowing. So kind of the sheets, you said you, it's a set and forget almost type of situation. Yeah. yeah. Fairly close. I mean, you can't forget them, but, but the gen, the general idea is once you, once you set those sheets, because the sail doesn't come past the mast, you don't have to release the sheets on the starboard side and tighten them on the port side in order to control that sail. You should be able to allow the sail to, to uh, go back and forth without having to adjust those sheets. Nice, nice. So I haven't sailed it yet, and we're going to go out tomorrow. Actually, we've got a good strong east wind. Yeah, we're going to give it a shot. So I can't wait to play with that. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now you of course, plan, playing with it is key, right? That's yeah. that's you know all this all this stuff that we talk about all day and every day is is theory, and then you've got to get out there and sea state and wind state and everyone on the boat and all those types of things. But uh, but yeah, it's it's a lot less work um tacking uh back and forth with a awesome. with a working jib so now you mentioned higher winds uh how does the uh is it is, is the working jib just it's a smaller cell so is it going to yep. perform better in the higher winds maybe in the 20s um you know definition of performing better is is kind of up in the air as to what what okay. that's going to be but yeah uh, a working jib is and it's S smaller jibs, smaller sails are designed differently than larger light wind Genoas. Um, light wind Genoas are exactly made for, for that. There's a deeper draft, so they're a more powerful sail to try to get the boat up and moving in lighter air, right? More sail area, lighter sail cloth. So as we get down into these smaller jibs and, and you know, this one in particular, a working jib, it's cut quite a bit flatter. So it doesn't have all that power. You can sheet it in a lot closer to the mast, so you should be able to point the, the boat a little bit higher into the wind, right? And all of those things uh, are going to mean less healing, right? So you're going to be pulled forward a lot more instead of being pushed sideways. Right? Family's going to love that. That means we can yeah. come have coffee and not, you know, lose breakfast yeah. in the meantime. It's, it's it's the don't spill my wine sale. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's exciting. That's very exciting to hear. Now, I have a buddy who has a Yankee sail. Yeah. Um, from what he tells me, it's just 
really small and cut really high. How does the working jib compare to that type of sail? Um, the, the Yankee sails are a style of, of working jib or style of head sail, um, more specific to a cutter rig, uh, a straight, that's the way they're designed. And as you found out with that inner stay, it's difficult to tack a large Genoa on a cutter rig. So the, the, the whole idea of a cutter rig is to take a, a sloop and divide that sail area of a Genoa into two sails, right? It distributes the, the forces uh, over two sails. You can develop the same power, but it gives you more versatility. So in order to tack that, what we do is the Yankee has a higher clue set, which allows it to get past that inner stay a lot easier. Got you. Okay. So maybe distant cousins is what it kind of sounds like between those two yeah. sails. Yeah. yeah, just just little different designs, right? And and I would I would classify all of those as jibs, right? Whether they're working jibs or Yankee jibs or you know all that kind of stuff, they are just design differences. Uh, and and one of the things that we really hyper focus on is let's let's get the words out of the way. Let's focus on a sail that's going to fit the boat that you own in the area that you're going to sail it and the way you want to sail it, yeah, right? Yeah. So I know there's a, I, I get to talk to people all day, every day about this stuff. And they all talked about, well, I was on this forum and they said, this size of sail is perfect for my boat. I, you know, it, it, it may be, um, depends on where you're sailing it, what you want to do with it. You know, I don't like spilling my wine, so I'm a, I typically sail a, you know, a 115 and around there, you know, that sort of thing, right? So, yeah. Awesome. Hey, this is exciting because, yeah, Nancy doesn't like spilling her wine. She's uh, <laughs> she's captain on the boat. Of course. And uh, I'm Helmsman. If I can keep the wine clean, uh, we're all happy. Well, sounds good. I can't wait to take this baby offshore. Um, it's going to be fun. Uh, it's going to yep. be a blast. Uh, any last tips or ideas that you have uh, to leave behind for the working jib? I, I think uh, just just get out there and sail it. Um, you know, make it make it your own. Uh, make it work for the crew that you've got on board. Speaking of which, need crew. Let us know. Okay. <laughs> all, all is willing to travel. You know. All right. <laughs> get on get on boats in beautiful turquoise waters. <laughs> yes, I don't blame you. That's awesome. Yes, for sure. Hey, thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, here's more videos for you to watch. You can click right here on the screen. Be sure to drop us a comment down below.